Welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel. My name is Adam Hancock, and today we release our brand new 2023 updated Siesta Key Florida A to Z guide. The most comprehensive single video you will find on the internet in totality. Without further ado, let's hop in and hope you enjoy. All right, let's start off with our highlight reel. So Siesta Key Florida has a lot going on here. So first off, number one beach ranked in the United States on multiple different occasions, which has a lot with already being in Southwest Florida as your preface. You have, of course, the quartz white sand, you know, not even the nicest day here, but sugar to the touch, doesn't get hot to the touch, whether it's 100 degrees outside. There's multiple beach villages with shopping and dining and boutiques, etc. You have a surprising amount of variety of living on the island, whether much more than meets the eye, whether that's a vacation rental, that is a condominium, or that is your main single family residence. And all of that is on top of probably the best single geography in the entire state of Florida when it comes to being adjacent to the Sarasota mainland and between Tampa and Naples. So needless to say, a lot at your disposal. All right, first thing we're talking energy and vibe. So the reason we're starting here is when it comes to Florida and the beach, you have options on top of options on top of options. So in order to be more useful, I wanna pull out only differentiators so you can separate the void in aspects. Um, so what you have here is you have a prototypical tourist centric laid back beach environment in every aspect of the world. You have tons of visitors, right? You can see here on Thursday morning in February, you have vacation rentals, you have seasonality that changes the whole landscape of what the demographic is. You have all that. You have pastel colors, boutiques, shops, dive seafood, the whole like. But as far as separating between like a, let's take a Longboat Key, a uh, Naples, um, Indian Rocks Beach, even in Pinellas County, what you have here as a differentiator is a laid back, casual and approachable environment. Okay, the second main thing we have to talk about when speaking of lifestyle here is obviously the main Siesta Key Beach. So a quick 30,000 foot view, Siesta Key Island, that's where we're at. Siesta Key Beach is one beach of actual three total beaches on the island. Because what we really have here is a barrier that is seven to eight miles long and Siesta Key just happens to be the main option. But it really is the heart of the island in all intents and purposes. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to get into things to do and all the things at your disposal throughout the whole barrier. But in this section, what I thought was useful was to pull out three things that are distinctly different about this beach versus stuff that's very close proximity that would give you another alternative. The one is a newer one versus when I grew up, and that is this huge parking lot area. So if you're someone that has kids or you want to, want to, you want to go to one main spot park and you want bathroom facilities, you want restaurants, you want a playground, and you want like a formal entrance to a beach, this is your spot. You know, a Longboat Key, Pensacola Beach, very, very different. This is one spot, once you park, you are good. Second thing is this is a very wide beach, and I mean from parking lot to water. There's a lot of beaches like Lido that are really long and lean. You keep driving, you park, it's a very short walk from the parking lot to the water. This one is not the case, right? So because of that, it creates an environment that gives you a couple different advantages. One is most people congregate in the same, uh, east to west lane of the beach. There's five lifeguard stands. If you're meeting people, you have a big crowd in town, you have all that kind of stuff going on. This is one where people are stepping over people to walk down to the water. Um, not as desolate feeling, so it's a good gathering place. Um, and also for outdoor recreation, volleyball, uh, bocce ball, cornhole, really, really good beach for that because you have a lot of lovely sand area to work with where you're not gonna have to fight for room, basically. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention was the sand. I already mentioned it briefly, but it can't, un, I can't overestimate enough uh, the quality of the sand here. Hottest of the day does not get hot to the touch. This does not exist as commonplace. Even going five, six miles south or north of this beach, you do not have this quality of sand. So it's not only nice that your feet don't get hot, but it's very, very lovely if you're not used to um, plentiful beaches where you live now. Um, quartz sand here, whether it's from the folk tale of the Appalachian Mountains, trickle down or whatever it may be, um, it is something that you do not see many places. All right, now onto shopping and dining. Like many parts of this video, a lot of the action exists here on the north side of the island. This is no different. So where I stand here is Siesta Key Village, and this is Ocean Boulevard, which in essence is Siesta Key's main street. So when it comes to shopping, you got a little bit something for everyone. You have shell shops if you're on vacation. There's a Lily Pulitzer in here. There's day spas. There's a farmer's market, a myriad of different boutiques that are kind of mixed in here in a cool way. When it comes to dining, you have a similar vein, right? You have uh, the broken egg for breakfast, which is Dick Vitale, the announcer's main spot. You have uh, live music at island kind of restaurants behind me. You have the Siesta Key Oyster Bar. 
you have the daiquiri deck for drinks, you have the beach club for nightlife. And the cool thing here is you have a lot of it in a condensed, walkable, and relatively safe feeling environment. If you want a little bit more texture, we do have a second option here, which is called the South Village but this is gonna add maybe one or two places, a bait and tackle shop and some of that kind of stuff that if you live on the island particularly and you're south, this gives you some grocery store options and that kind of thing. But the main action when it comes to shopping and dining on Siesta Key sits right here. All right, once you've got your shopping and dining fix, now we're gonna separate things to do from just an outdoor recreation and just general other things to do on the island. You know, one thing to start off with a Siesta Key Florida is you don't wanna get weird with it. You wanna do the stuff that you should do when you come to this kind of island, whether you're visiting or you're living on it, right? That's where the island is special in what it offers when it comes to island stuff. And what I mean by that is like, you know, rent a scooter or bicycle on your island. It's very walkable, but it's even more rideable because it's only eight miles, right? So even on a beach cruiser, you have uh, Turtle Beach. So one way to use the variety, say you are a Siesta Key Beach person, but Turtle is a place you could go to to use their campground. Um, to fish potentially, but get a little bit away from people. Turtle is a great way to use the variety of the island just for particular recreation areas. You have yoga on the beach, obviously super big perk there. There's private clubs, there's organizations, there's yoga facilities that go out to the beach separately. You have the drum circle, that's very in vogue if you've never been to that. Big thing with this beach, be something to do at night rather. Um, stand, up, stand up paddle boarding, kayaking would be something to check out if you're a little bit more adventurous. Um, and then you could even go, um, uh, snorkeling and fishing in particular when it comes to non-boat. One thing to check out again this variety aspect is different parts of the island offer different aspects of how the water is protected and used which creates clear water in certain areas, more fish and wildlife and there's an area called Point of Rocks that's off of Crescent Beach which is in the middle of the island and that'd be another uh, example of a way that you can do something different on a different part of the island. All right and the last thing I want to discuss when it comes to what is life actually like on the island of Siesta Key, Florida is what I alluded to earlier, and that's a locational geography uh, advantage, you know? So you have two ways to look at it. One's the island itself, and then what surrounds the island. So on the island itself, you have, like I mentioned, the three different sections. Well, you have three different beaches that a lot of the activity surrounds, but you have two different bridges as well. So where I stand here on the north side, right? That's the heart of it. That's where all the action is, the main Siesta Key Beach. You have the main Siesta Key Shopping Village, but you also have the North Bridge, right? So a lot of residential housing, but also the North Bridge gives you six miles exit to downtown Sarasota. Also puts you a stone throw to Lido Beach, Longboat Key, St. Armand Circle, which is over a hundred shops on its own outright. Um, but all the Northern stuff, which a lot of Sarasota's action on the mainland is North. Then you have the second option, that's Crescent Beach. So Crescent Beach gives you a lot of the perks of the main Siesta Key Beach. Beautiful sand, beautiful water, just a couple miles South, but it's a lot harder to access for the layman. There's one tiny parking lot, if you even see the parking lot, I can't even turn my truck around in it, it's so narrow. So if you don't walk to the beach, you're not staying on it, it's harder to access. Harder to access equals more discretion, less people, etc. but the same perks of the water. Third option on the island, and you're by the South Bridge. So the, the, there's only two bridges. The South Bridge, Stickney Point takes you the, the exit to the south, right? So you have Golf Gate, you have Palmer Ranch, it's easier to shoot to Venice. Um, you have that side of town on the mainland. The third option on the actual island is, is the Turtle Beach area. That is the furthest south. What you sacrifice in beach quality, it's a little bit more rocky, etc. You get a lot less people and a very different vibe. Big drop off into the water, great place to fish, safe place to bring kids as far as the amount of people. There's a playground, there's a campground, um, there's some facilities there, and then you got a little restaurant and stuff, but you'd go there to get away from people. And a lot of the homes there aren't vacation oriented. So then you take all of that step off the island on one of the two bridges. What is Sarasota to the state? And like I mentioned, I think it personally is the best location you could get, right? You are 45 minutes one way to downtown St. Petersburg, Florida. You're an hour one way to Tampa, two hours to Orlando. You're an hour and a half to Fort Myers. You are two hours to Naples. You are uh, an hour and a half to three major airports. You're a three and a half to Miami. Um, you can take a ferry to the Keys via Fort Myers. You're four to Jacksonville, three and a half to Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, and you're six hours to Savannah, Georgia. It's hard to beat that if you're gonna to move to the state of Florida. And if you live here and that's your day trip ability, I don't know how you mirror that. All right, welcome to part two of the video. And this is all about where to live uh, in Siesta Key, Florida. So one thing about shopping an island or getting close to the water, if you've ever tried to do this, it's way harder to navigate than any suburb, right? These aren't fully formed gated communities that have names that you can just grab one and say, I wanna build a house here or go here. It is it's full of vague, vagueness and it's full of ambiguity. 
And I grew up right around this island. And when I was researching this video to, to prep for, you know, how to make this impactful for you guys, it was, became very evident to me. There's not a single thing I can say over video in five minute term that is going to actually give you real tools to efficiently work your way through the island when it comes to purchasing or renting a home. So in order to do that, um, I built you a tool. So I'm gonna pause for just a second. It's a little different than what I would normally do, but I'm gonna pause for just a second. And I built a supplemental tool. I'm gonna put the link right here and it's also in the description box below. If you click that link, it goes to a Dropbox file. You wanna download that file because I built an interface that you need to work through the actual Excel file. And this is a tool that you can, there's not a single thing on the internet, I can tell you with full confidence, that will allow you to do this, right? I, it took me hours to build it. It's every single neighborhood, including every condominium, everything. You can shop by investor friendly, the view, bay, beach, canal, the price point and the neighborhood name and everything in between. So please utilize that. You don't have to use that at the same time as the video, but I wanna get that across. With that being said, for this purpose, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a more summary version. I'm gonna talk main single family homes. I'm gonna talk main condominiums and I'm gonna talk investor friendly tell you how many there are um, and what they're working with, and then we will move on. All right, first up, we have something I'm calling single family homestead. These would be areas where it's a single family non-condominium house to start, but an area where you might live more than 50% of the year. If you actually resided on the island more than half the time, you don't have to, but this would be an area would be good for that. What you have here as a plus is there's over 42 technical single family centric neighborhoods in the eight mile island. Um, so this is an inventory issue. If you go on Zillow, you're not gonna see it feel like that. That's just availability, right? But there is 42 that all have a good amount of homes in them. So on the surface, it gives you a variety. Number two is that technically over 70% of those 42 neighborhoods exist north of the main Siesta Key Beach, right? So you can really hone in and isolate that area and it'll probably give you some level of price point variety all pushed to the north end of the island. So one way to use my tool to make this better would be um, you could go to my tool if you downloaded it. You can click single family homes only, right? So that just isolates them immediately. Maybe then you go price point and bucket and you can select multiple if you hold command or control. And then maybe you say, I want only bay and canal views thinking that it'll be cheaper than golf views, right? And then you could say, I want uh, only things built before the lead paint error. So you can sort by year bucket. So that's a good way of getting smarter um, and more intelligent around the neighborhoods by using that tool. All right, second up, we have condominiums. So this is obviously pretty commonplace with any sort of barrier island. Get close to the water, it's easier to build condominiums. Not a lot different here. You have 84 different options, so double the amount of single family home options that you can buy separate. These are separate developments of some sort that condominiums are based in. You also spread location a little bit, right? Condominiums, because of the footprint, is a lot smaller because they can use height. They can get way closer and more densely populated by the beach. And this is where Crescent Beach area, the middle of the island would really pop up. So you have the North Island where I stand now, but you also pop up to uh, Crescent a lot. So this is an area where maybe half of the island's in play versus just a quarter of it. And then lastly, um, hopping back to my tool just for a second here, shameless plug, is one of the reasons I said this is not something you can find on the internet is rental restrictions. Rental restrictions are incredibly vague and no one wants to commit to them. In my tool, based on the knowledge and the HOA information that I have access to, I actually have a bucket that you can sort by under a month, three to six months. You can sort to uh, 12 month rentals only if you're looking to stay away from investors. And then even how many times you can rent a year, that is on every single neighborhood and condominium development in my entire tool. All right, the third thing on where to live, just to give as much value as I can think of is a bonus round of everything else. So what if you're someone who loves everything I'm showing you, but for whatever reason, whether that's price or just logistics, you can't live on the island itself. So one thing to look at would be in Sarasota, Florida as a whole, if you're west of the interstate I-75, that gets you generally an earshot of the beaches. And Siesta sits mid to south in town, but if, you're, if you just get west of that interstate or on it, you're nine to 11 miles or closer to the beach and, but that opens up a lot of housing options, right? So you have Sky Ranch would be a good example. Taylor Morrison, new construction gets all way more size for your money, all that kind of stuff and family centric, good schools close by. You have Grand Park, which is Neal Communities. All of Palmer Ranch is in play on resale for um, old school suburb. And then you have um, all the areas in between, right? So the thing about a popular town is no one talks about it because it was already built, right? You have Golfgate, Pinecraft, 
Bee Ridge East. You have all these areas that already existed that are just on resale little borough neighborhoods where everybody's talking about Lakewood Ranch and Venice because the room was already taken that was close to the beach, right? So all these areas are six to nine miles. And one other thing I would look at, if you're someone um, on a unique aspect that uh, just doesn't want to be isolated, right? If you commit to the beach, like my parents live like three blocks over here and you're that's a commitment, you know, holidays, there's a lot of people on the island now, you're not shooting on and off. School's a little choppier on the beach because it's more isolated. It's just, you're a beach person. If you're someone that needs to be or wants to be in the action a little bit more or want access to everything, a couple ways to look at it. The Quay, which is in Sarasota, it's kind of a, a bougie district, 14 acres of waterfront. There's luxury condominiums, but it's waterfront closer to downtown, not too far from either beach, right? So you have Lido and Siesta in play. Downtown itself would give you similar perks and there it might open you up to a little bit more townhome aspect and old school bungalows more than would be at the beach itself. And a third one would be Golden Gate Point. Golden Gate Point's a peninsula that's at the foot of the Ben Franklin Bridge before you go to Lido Key. And that gets you obviously surrounded by water on three sides with the peninsula, but that gets you condominium, single family and the like. So that would be one option of our downtown. The perk is once you go west, you get everything. But if you don't wanna to commit to being over the bridge on the barrier island, um, urban districts with waterfront and beach access might give you a little bit more lifestyle perks. All right, my friends, that is a wrap for my breakdown of Siesta Key, Florida. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and liking. Also that free tool I mentioned, this video in particular and this tool in particular, I think is one of the most valuable ones I've put out if you can uh, use it contextually. So please consider downloading that and checking it out. It is completely free. And finally, beyond that, if you're looking for any real estate assistance in Sarasota, the islands, Tampa, Naples, anywhere in between, we would love to assist. Please consider reaching out. My website, thesunshinestateco.com, has a newsletter sign up, different than anything you'll get on YouTube. It has other free tools, resources, relocation guides, and much, much more coming. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.